Hello, fellow gamers. I'm Glory Hound, and this is the lovely Dr. Glory Hog pruning himself right before your eyes. <laughs> they didn't actually get to see that. I thought they saw your arm drop, at least. They, they got a little bit of the... the arm drop. <sighs> some of that right there. Listen, That's all for was, you out there. If I was doing it for them, I'd do it like this. <laughs> Oh my, you're going to get our it's chat in, going. It's built in slow-mo. <laughs> Whenever I brush the hair back, it's all slow-mo all built the time. Built in slow-mo? Yeah, it's just... What if I did it for you? What if I just... Try it. <laughs> I don't that think work? you did it right. No. <laughs> what was that? Who does that to look attractive? Have somebody else squish your face together. Like, like, it's like, that'd be like your grandma coming up and being like... <laughs> That's, nobody wants that. <laughs> The kitten. Hello to everybody in chat today. Oh, they're out of talking about <laughs> I Love Cats, the kitten, and the Witcher yes. games. I'm pretty Ooh. pumped about both of those. I enjoy I Love I'm Cats. On. It's one of those games that if somebody was like, hey, you want to play I Love Cats? I'd say, yeah. 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 yeah, I do. I saw the kittens. I'm in love. I love the kittens. I think it's going to be a great addition. I haven't had a chance to go ahead and like get my hands on the expansion or anything, but I am totally down for it. And Your claws. The Witcher game, I've tried contacting the company to get more information on that, and I am... Striking out? Yeah, I am not they getting any care. information. They They're don't like, care. <laughs> They're like, whatever. Who are you? Whatever, your peanuts. Get out of here. <laughs> Come back when you've got like 50,000 times more followers. Right. That's fair. That happens sometimes to us. Hello to our chat today, though. We have Nosferatu Clown in chat, Battlecry, Kabuki Kid, Petter. Let's see Omar, here. Omar. Andrew. That's right. We have Molly. Molly who, first time. First time. Catch us live. Welcome to the show live. Silent love. That's right. I love Ford seeing meeting. new people and stuff. Yes. Hello, everybody. We have everybody. a bunch of people. A bunch of people. Did we mention people. Nosferatu Clown? I think so. Okay. So today, I just have to tell all of you that the lovely, lovely Glory Mom went ahead and gave us $25 gift certificates to give away. And we're going to be doing one of these each week for the Kickstarter show. We are going to be going between live comments on one week and then comments after the show on another week. So stay tuned for the end of the show right. because we're we'll going to tell you. Yeah, end. we're going to give you the deets on how to get one of those and buy yourself some Kickstarters. Okay, everyone? Nice. <laughs> I like not spot too. During COVID, I pay for someone, a real person that comes squish my face. She's like, please, treat me, please, treat me please like a grape. Touch me. I haven't been touched in treat three years. Treat me like a grape and put me out in the sun so I can dry out. <laughs> getting a little weird in here. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I love cat. Uh, I love kittens. Take my burrito for real, right? And they're real cute. Like, I saw some pictures on the internet. Mmm. Fatal Paper Cut says, just get bigger. We're trying, Fatal we're... Paper Cut. <laughs> We've gotten that critique before. People are like, oh, yeah, we love your we... playthroughs. Get bigger. Get bigger. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. absolutely. That's everybody's comment. That's every publisher's yeah. comment. Is Hold just on. get bigger. Let me I'm just, like, oh, uh, okay. Is there somewhere you can just buy that, where you can just buy subscribers? I think you can, but I'm not I'm not into that, okay? <laughs> All right. I'll, you know what? I'm happy, though, with our group, because our group always shows up. Absolutely. So people that subscribe you all are amazing. show up. For when real. I look and I see somebody who has like 20,000, 30,000 subscribers and they've got like 500 views and I'm like, we've got like not even 2,000 and we've got 500 yeah. views because people show up and we appreciate that. Absolutely. And we kind of, I feel like we try to, you know, make sure and feed that and everything for everybody to be here because we love talking and to Battle all of you. Battle Cry right. Everyone who's here right now is in, is in here before we're cool. So you guys can all yes. be hipsters in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm eating veggies. Ah, uh, very cool. Thank you, Glory Mom. Absolutely. Glory Mom is amazing. Glory oh, Mom has always supported Fidel us. Fidel says if we pay him, he'll he'll make a whole bunch of bot accounts. Oh, well, there Only you go. Only the best bots. And with names like 33547. But we do have those milestones to get past. So at our 2K, sure. we're going to be doing some giveaways and stuff, too. For, so stay tuned for And that's for all also that. just because we want to. Like, there's, yeah. there's not a rule that you have to. <laughs> it's just kind of like, hey, we've got some games we that just, we love to share. Yeah, we just really love sharing with all of you. Okay? So like when Final Frontier reached out to us to play, Merchants Code, we'd already backed the game. Yeah. So it was like, well, we've got another copy. We could sell so... it or give it away. And so we decided to... Sell... Give it away! <laughs> give it away, so stay right. tuned for that. I think we're only like... We're close to only like 100 sub subs yeah. away from like our 2K mark. 120, something like that. As soon as that 2K mark like, hits, like... We're doing it. We're doing it. We're, we're going like, to get we're an launching influx it. of 100 new subscribers, all called a fatal... <laughs> a fatal cut. A fatal something. Cut of something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. First up, we have Vivid Memories. This is by Floodgate so Games. It's for two to four players. Should last about 30 to 60 minutes. This is an abstract sort of game. Abstract, like, sort, sort of game? set collection. It it's an abstract, like, placement game, kind of like yeah, an Yeah, abstract placement, or... yeah. 
What's kind the of other like one? Sagrada. Sagrada, kind of. Yeah. Sagrada is like dice manipulation, but it's an abstract placement game. See, look, you're abstractly placing those things. The calico. Could you relate it close to calico? Because yeah, it has I the same it... type of inset. I think it fits Calico and Azul more than like a Sagrada. I agree. Because you brought up Sagrada. You... Oh, bike jump! You can do a sweet <laughs> bike jump. Oh, it wasn't a sweet bike jump. It was close. <laughs> it was close. He was getting ready to do a sweet bike jump and then he decided to ski instead. This is like you and your memories and them being like banked in there, like in your little memory yeah. mind. Well, we've talked about this before about, you know, how you make your synapses make connections and that's yeah. how you recall memories later and you got your short term, long term memory. I know, I know say, that I've like tried to bore you with some of this stuff sometimes. My memory is all about facts and that's it. Your like any other memory is memory... great as long as it's not tied to emotion. Yeah, it's yeah. all logical memory. All no logical memory. memory. If you want to know like some random logic stuff, like I don't know, octopuses it's... have like alien DNA or donut brains or something weird like that. Like, that's the sort of information I can give you. Or maybe the rules of a game that I read, like, Did you know two years ago. Did you know that all cats are 90% liquid? <gasps> that's true. That's true. So, fine. We're, I'm like the opposite. I definitely have the emotional memories, right? Yeah. It's like a song can trigger something where I'll be mm -hmm. like, oh, I remember this because of this song or that or whatever. So, just different ways of doing it, and my way is better, and that's fine. <laughs> Better. But like I'll remember, so, like I'll remember the game of Rising Sun, and I'll be like, "This is what we said," and these are the jokes we laughed yeah. about, and everything else. But then if you ask me, like, who won it or how to play Rising Sun right now, I'll be like, I don't know. It's been like a year, two years. Oh. Members ha has a really, really important comment here. Okay. Big question is, do the components look like candy? Which is key in a any sort bit. of placement game like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fatal Paper Guy says, "I, I don't, don't have anything. any memories." Hashtag humble brag. <laughs> I don't remember how I got my name. I think they're really core cool. You could eat these. Portion of this game is... They would go down easy because they're shaped oh like a pill. No, don't eat easy, the pieces, everyone. Swallow. Don't eat the pieces. Don't chew them. Just swallow them whole. The very cool thing about this particular game is that you're going to be using these cards, and those cards are going to give you like special points and stuff like that, but they stand on the top of your board there, and then all of your connections that you're doing kind of feed up to there, right, with how right. you're trying to place everything. So that's why it reminds me more of like an Azul or a Calico because the placement portion on these is so important in rows and columns and stuff, you know? It, I think Calico is probably the best because Calico, every tile you place down is going to trigger multiple things basically, and right? It's you're, gonna... it's trying Because you're trying to make it like do this pattern and then do for this section right. over here. So you're trying to, every tile you place is for multiple objectives. This is similar too. Because when you place these down, you want your purples, for example, to connect to all these basic memories that you have or, right. or you know, these really vivid memories that you have. And you'll score off of that. And then whenever you score one of the tiles with a memory on it, it blocks one of the actions you can normally do. But it gives you a different action. And then once you do that action, you flip it and then it goes away. So there's lots of different stuff. There's like reset points. There's moving these little, little pieces everywhere. The Azul-like part is you either get like three different ones or two of the same oh, color. Oh, yeah, when you're grabbing from the bag and stuff, yeah. Well, you grab them from the tiles. So, it's like Azul. You grab them off of specific tiles. Oh, that's right. You, but you populate them from the bag, so you don't know what's going to be yes. populated yeah. on there. So yeah, so that part is Azul-like, but I think it's got the puzzlingness of a calico. <laughs> edible version, too. Maybe Everything in the future. Everything can be edible if you're you gonna, try hard enough. You're going to have to ask Floodgate Games about that. you so. got to remember, Kabuki, somebody was the first person to sit down and be like, I'm eating this light bulb. <laughs> so... And now it's done. Nosferatu says, dude, I'm all about this thematically. I want to relive the days before the cold world beatdowns got to my dreams and aspirations. Yeah, I want to go back For to real. the days where I would sit around like, in my kayak and be like, I'll be in space one day. You'll get to check out that sick bike jump and remember it. Like, Ooh. all of life, and you'll be like, mm, it was so amazing. Not, you know, the remembrance part where you go back and be like, oh, that wall wasn't really that See, tall. is it weird? <laughs> that happened. Is it weird that I don't remember, like, what I wanted to be when I was a kid? Like, people are like, oh, I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was a kid. I don't think I ever had that. When I people, don't, I didn't have that either. Yeah, when people are like, what do we want to be when you grow up? I'm like, uh, rich? Like, I just don't want to work. That was the only thing I wanted. I wanted to live, like, the Rich kid. is not a thing that you can, you're just not, like, I just want to be rich when I get older. Yeah, Are you like, the Kardashian of no, like gamers? No, because they is... work too hard. I just, <laughs> I just want to be independently. I want there to you be just... an error, like in blank check, where somebody hits my bike, they write me a blank check, I write in a million dollars, I buy a slide okay. that goes from my second floor roof of my bedroom to the pool. That's the kind of life I want to live. Okay. Hello, Jim. How are you doing? So I don't have a smart reason. For this thought, but also getting a Zool vibe from yeah. it. Don't mind. Yeah, it definitely has an Abzul 
<laughs> yeah, I need old money. I, I kind of want to just, you know, like inherit a bunch of money for no reason. You for need... no actual merit of my own. I just want the money. Yes, yes like Paris, Paris Hilton. Hilton of Vorty. And then people will be like, what do you do? I'll be like, I go to parties and stuff and it's important for people to see me. There you go. <gasps> That's hot. Oh my God. I like this 3D player marker. Like the, the little, little paper airplane. Paper airplane. All I can see is people throwing this and people getting hurt <laughs> as a mom. I think it's misshapen, so like you wouldn't as really be able to throw the point at somebody. No, I, I would be. I would throw this at somebody immediately. Yeah, but I think the chance of the point getting you is. It's slim. a paper airplane. You're gonna throw it. Yet the amount of times I hit somebody in the eyeball with the paper airplane significantly higher than it should have been. I'm incredibly lucky about being unlucky. So that's that is what would happen. It would Let's, go whoop around your glasses like into then, your yeah. eye. Let's talk real here, because she knows this. She's witnessed this phenomenon. You could not give me, like, say, a football and be like, hit that tire over there. Would never happen. If you give me a rock or a golf ball and you say, hit that kid who's, like, <laughs> jumping around over there, I'll be like, bink, and I'll hit that kid every time. There's something about an actual living, moving target that makes me, like, hone in and nail them every time. I don't, you just is, it like, it. is it like hunter DNA or something? <laughs> hunter if there's DNA. something I shouldn't hit, if you're like, Definitely don't hit your brother. Instead, shoot that can on top of his head. My brother's getting shot for sure. Is that <laughs> skill or? So Andrew also says, I would throw it. Who in chat would throw the little pa fake paper airplane? Like, think, it's very throwable. I, I don't if, recommend it. I think if they're in our chat, they're definitely in the it's throw very camp. Thro they're just automatically in, in the, the throw. throw camp, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Overall, this is super colorful. The art is beautiful in it and everything. I like a lot of this stuff from Floodgate Games. They have a lot of fun games that have a lot of colorful theme and excitement behind them and then have some really fun gameplay with those abstract pieces, like that abstract knowledge and stuff like that that's going on in the game, like your Hollies and what's the other ones I'm thinking of? I'm like just, your Sagrada. I'm laughing because the chat's and... getting me so close to telling me one of the, telling one of my Dr. Glory Hog stories. But oh, I'll no. Refrain. Oh, I'll no. Refrain. I'll refrain. Chat, are you backing this game? I'm really curious because this is kind of right up my alley. Hello, Steve Park Smith. How are you doing it's, today? It's interesting. Like, I enjoy Calico from the aspect that it's one of the better puzzly games, but I don't gravitate towards abstract puzzle games in the first place. But I know a lot of people do. Like, I know Petter tends to like some of those games. Right. You do. Game Boy, Game Boy Geek does. Like, you guys like a lot of those, like, like uh, deduction, not social deduction, just like straight deduction right. and puzzle games. Because it's like you guys are bored with life and you guys just need to like solve a puzzle. And I'm like, <laughs> nah. That's what I want to. I want to toss dice, tear things up, unlock epic storylines. <gasps> I want to do like the main quest, the side quest, all the quests. I do logic puzzles and I love them yeah. so stinking much. Come I can't you. tell you how many times it's been like 11 o'clock at night and the lights on. And I'm like, what are you writing right now? She's like, oh, I'm doing this logic puzzle. And I'm like, I had to do those as homework. <laughs> Why are you doing them for fun? For fun, okay. I don't know. Kabuki, I'm really curious to hear all about the Smirch, the Agents of Smirch, once we get to that. Like, uh, because I, I knew you were backing it, and I, meet, I specifically put it on the show because of that, and I was hoping you'd show up, so. This one's interesting. This is a deluxe version, so the retail yeah. version of this will be different. I don't know how, but I'm something to keep in mind, Mepper, if that matters yeah. to you. Yeah, I'm imagining like cardboard pieces. I don't and think stuff this is like one that. of those games that like it's going to be dramatically like you feel like you have to have the collector's edition or the Kickstarter edition. It'd probably be nice. I mean, who doesn't want plastic pieces over, say, like cardboard pieces? Yeah. Oh, Game Boy I, Geek did a thing. On I this. think that. Floodgate Games, although they are more known in the community, they're still a pretty small company. So I always choose to back smaller companies on Kickstarter if I can, because I, think, I know that it helps the company out overall. This week, though, I don't think we have any major hitters. It's not I don't think we, we have any have, like, big Come companies on or either. Yeah. On here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all smaller ones. All of these campaigns are like 200,000, 50,000. None of these are really big this, this right. week. Right. I'm down with this, though. I, I really like everything that's going on. I love the flipping portion of these cards and stuff. I love how you're trying to place everything in your little hexes and try to get them to line up with the cards plus each other, like all sorts of stuff. Like there's a lot of really fun stuff going on here. The, what I feel like holds yeah. it back is the fact that with these games, there's not a way to figure out if you like them or not without really playing them. I agree. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 No, that does make sense. Because, like... I feel like that about, like, rolling rights a lot of times, too. Because I'm like, right. oh, this one... Because I have found, like, two rolling rights, maybe three that I really enjoy, mm -hmm. but 
and I don't like all the rest of them. So it's really hard for me because I'm like, there's so many that are just going to be like a straight pass for me, and it's just always risky. So it's risky with these types of games sometimes for that. But I will say Floodgate Games seems to have this niche because they've done Bosk. Yeah. They did this one. They did Holly. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did Bosk. That was the other one they I was did thinking Holly. of. Yeah. They mm -hmm. did, you said what, Sagrada, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have that niche for that kind of abstract 50-ish dollar game. They I know feel what like they're doing with they, it, yeah. yeah they, I feel like they that's definitely their niche at this point in time. So. I feel like that is most games. That's true. <laughs> it is hard to tell sometimes. But that's why we do our playthroughs, right? So you can see what it's yeah, like. Yeah, no, absolutely. You we can try be an to impartial do partial third player. I feel like once you've... Once you've played a whole lot of games and you've reviewed a lot of games and tested them and stuff like that, and you get to see a lot of the stuff that's wrong, you just maybe have like a little bit better eye for looking at the mechanics of a game and going, okay, that should probably work. And being more successful in making that assumption, I think. Yeah, I think that's true. But even then, but that just comes with like when you get the final time. package, though. You're like, oh, this isn't what I thought it would be. Sometimes that happens too. too, and sometimes the rules change in between and everything. Oh, so that yeah. makes a difference too. There's been a, a couple of games, especially within like the last year, that I'm like, what? This isn't the same game that I originally signed up for. I still think that I've just gotten bitter this year too. Bitter. I'm, now all the games I look at have to be like a really good two-player experience. I think that changes things. Yeah. Because a lot of games that normally I'd get and I'd be like, oh, this would be so much fun with everybody. I don't assume that there's going to be an everybody anymore. Yeah. Or before, I was like, oh, we'll play this with Greg. Or, oh, we'll play this with Game Boy Geek. Or, oh, we'll play with my brother. Now I'm like, is this going to be fun? Just you and me sitting across the table looking at each other going, your turn. <laughs> Makes a difference. All right. So I think this one's cute. But the it's price on, my... on this one here is $50. Mm -hmm. Doctor, would you back that? Chat, would you back that? It's in my try before you buy. Like, I think... It's interesting, but this is not my number one pick. I do have a number one pick this week, though. Interesting. I always try to have one, specifically. This is not one that I feel like I gotta like slap down my monies right now. Fifty dollars. Let's really go. I really like the look of this game. I just know that I'm really, really choosy with these type of abstract games. So right, like, I really you like, like the second. I like the second Azul, but not the first one. Yes. <laughs> so like, that's the one I was and of. I'm not a huge fan of Sagrada, like. There's certain abstract games that I really, really, really enjoy. So that's why I think this one like here... Like Holly, the concept is a lot of fun, but it's not one that we play a lot. So. Right, but I love the fact that it's 3D and you have like your chest-like yeah. movements and stuff like that. And that's one that I would play more at, probably with like the kiddo other, and stuff. Right, or other people. But right. like we said, at this point in time, still all of our gaming is happening basically at right. two-player. This one I feel like, though, is more like Calico where you would play like... Your abstract game. What's a Greg? <laughs> Try before you buy, everyone. Try before you buy. You don't like Sagrada? What's wrong with you? I don't know. But you've played There's Sagrada some... a lot on your phone. I've played I've played Sagrada, like, a lot. a lot. I've played it on my phone. I've played it with many other people. Like, it's a pretty popular game. I keep playing it, but I'm never like, oh, like, the first person to pick it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Does that make sense? So you'll play it, but it's I'll not your it. number one game. I, and I enjoy playing it, but it's not like, oh, I need to play this game right now. Like, that's kind of the border for me. I always try to have a number one pick. She's usually the one that's, like, got two or three I'm games. I'm like, <laughs> if, if somebody was in the room number with one me, pick. I'd be like, hey, you want to play Calico? You want to play Calico with me? You know? That's true. Like, <laughs> I think this one probably, if you like Calico, I think this one is going to probably play a little bit. Closer, closer to that, that than it would even like an Azul. I, I think, think Calico so. is a better, a, a better comparison. comparison yeah. Similar design space mm -hmm. as far as complexity of what you're doing. Which, Calico is super good. And we're going to try to get our hands on this one, everyone. We know somebody who has it, so we are going to try to get it and hopefully oh, play right. it. So, yeah, because Game Boy Geek has yep. it, right? All right, next on. He still has it. All right, next up, we have. Dominations with a triangle in the middle. This is by Holy Grail Games. This is for two to four players. Should last about 60 to 120 minutes. Petter says, I need to play my copy of Calico. Yes, you do, because it's real it's, good. It's pretty good, yeah. It's, <laughs> I've played it like four or five times now, and it, I'll play it. It's not my number one pick, but I'm not upset about playing it, where there's some other games she wants to play where I'm like, I would rather be So, dead. Dominations is a civilization building game. You're going to be using the middle portion there to kind of build where your settlements are going to be, but then you also have this card portion here. Where you're setting up like what your settlements can do and stuff. That's like your tableau building, essential. Well, not tableau building. Can it's, I? Can sorry, I go ahead. Yes. I would say this is not a civilization game. I okay. think the theme is civilization. Okay. But it's really an abstract tableau building game. Okay. The tech tree is the biggest thing. Tech tree. Thing. Yeah. Because your there tech you go. tree is more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. That middle portion <laughs> is just how you get your resources or your influence. 
to affect your tech tree. So it's really a tableau building game with the idea of civilization. So like the theme behind it is when you play down this tableau card, it's not a door or it's not like the hunter and wife, you know, or, or uh, husband and wife in Everdell. It is civil, something civilization related. Sorry. I'm typing songs in chat. <laughs> Let me show you the games. Shiny, shimmering, splendid. Have you ever played Splendor? <laughs> I bet you don't know the rules. A whole new game. So Dominations is interesting because I actually like, I don't know if I like Civilization games, but I haven't actually played like a big four-hour Civilization game. But I like the idea of it. I play those types of apps on my phone. I played those types of games like Command & Conquer, which is a real-time strategy game, but it, a big part of it is that tech tree, right? Even though the tech tree never changes unless you change which clan or race you're playing. So Battlecry says, this looks familiar, and it is. This is a game yeah, that you can purchase as of right now, but this is the deluxe portion where they have all the expansions yeah. and all the good stuff in there in one gigantical box if you would like to purchase that. So this is one that scores a 7.6 on BGG, so it's highly rated. And, I mean, if you has anybody ever played it? I'm thinking Kabuki Kid has played it. <laughs> Here, I'm actually sad I haven't played this game. Here's the thing with it, though. I think people will go into this game thinking it's something that it's not. It actually is easier than it looks. Because the easy part is getting your resources, right? You're just trying to min-max how, how much influence you get by the triangle you place down. So you're going to get resources yeah. based off what you play, place it next to. So you're going to want to make sure you don't leave like spots where your, your opponent can just put in a spot and get like four or five, six resources, whatever amount of resources or influence. So you, you definitely want to do that. But in the heart of it is just it's a bunch of it's a bunch of um, tug and pull, right? It's it like, is absolutely because you're trying to beat them on the different influence tracks to get bonuses for like the next round. You're trying to build out your tech tree and specialize. But a lot of the beginning tech tree stuff is the same. So like you know, like the first couple of things you go into a green tech tech tree or a yellow, you know they're going to be mostly the same with a few differing ones. It's not until you get much later into the tech trees that they really start to differ. So I think it's one that you can actually get into and play. I think the main detractors I've heard is that if you're playing this like three or four players, it can be a, little, a it bit can be long. Very long because yeah, be there's a, a lot going on in it. You're you're managing multiple things. It's kind of like our steampunk rally fusion last night. That game could be fast, but <laughs> when you place something down, it triggers this thing, which triggers this thing, which triggers this thing. I think this game's going to kind of have that same type of feel where every little thing you do is going to affect multiple oh, things. Oh, absolutely. And you're like, oh, wait, no, I get more influence because I have this card that gives me more influence. And mm -hmm. But this one says if I lose a red influence, I get two yellow influence. And I think there's going to be some kind of play like that that's going to happen. And there's a lot of tracking all the different tracks because you've got multiple tracks you're trying to keep track of and trying to dominate and win. So, But it is abstract because you're not just rolling dice in each other. No. And it's not like Seven Wonders where you're like, I've got more military than you, so I beat you in this. It's there's, seems like there's a lot of different ways you can kind of go. There's some really good comments coming in. So first off, Nasratu says, "Time out, giant bunny holding giant bunny statue holding a torch. Your arguments are invalid," mm. <laughs> which is totally understandable. Fair. It's very cute. The other thing is, where was it? You get to build a oh, rabbit as a wonder of the world. The board looked messy until I watched the playthrough video. Says Jay Peters, and I yeah. can totally understand that because I was actually talking to Doctor about this. That this game, although it doesn't look like it's going to be hard to play. It's a lot of stuff to keep track of, I think, and not in a bad way, just in the fact that that time while playing it is going to be extended because of all the things that you do have to do throughout the game. Does yeah. that make sense? But it is rated at like an hour and a half, two hour game. Yeah, it is a longer game. Some people have said that it takes longer. It took their group longer. I, I think that's If you're first an learning, with, I could imagine that. Right. Yeah. And if you're playing a four player, I'm looking at it as a two player experience. Yeah. I think it'll probably be a two hour game with two players. Mm hmm. Maybe a little bit longer that first time, but I think if you know that a lot of this stuff is just a gateway to get you to the higher tech tree stuff, you don't have to overanalyze it a whole bunch, and it really doesn't depend on your group. Like, I play probably at the speed of two times most gamers do, and you play at the speed of probably 0.5 of what most gamers do, so we kind of balance each other out. You know, you take two minutes, I take 30 seconds, and it ends up being about two to, you know, two to three minutes is what right. an average gamer would take or whatever, right? So I think it kind of balances out. I think... At two players would be good, but I'm not going to back this 100%. Why is that? 100% not back this. Because you can either get the new stuff, which means you have to have the original, 
or you can get the all-in, which is $180. <laughs> I was just going to go over that. There's no <laughs> way I'm going to drop $180 on a so, game that I don't know. Now, I, I have before. Like, Primal was like we spent 130 on that. I think about 130 is about the biggest we've gone on most games, maybe more on a come on game. If you but have, we don't drop $200 on a game we just don't know anything about. If you have Dominations, I believe the in-pledge on this is $43 to kind of get whatever they're offering Sweet. in the campaign. Yeah, upgrades. But if you do want the gigantical box of cool stuff and everything all together into one nicely neat packed bow experience, then it is $182 for you. Yes. So That's you got to be sure. <laughs> You gotta be sure. <laughs> okay, so Studio Land says once you own Monumental, it's hard to justify any more stuff games. I'm interested in Monumental, and we actually have a 4X card game, but I think that's more traditional. This feels like a very yeah. much more like an, this feels closer to more like a Seven Wonders. Now, to be very clear, it's not because you're drafting cards or anything like that. I'm saying as far as the abstractness of it, mm -hmm. you're not actually moving like a ship over to attack another ship or anything like that. I think it's more of an abstract tableau builder than it is a heavy civilization game but it might take two hours which for a lot of people that's too much to play for a game like this yeah without it being a full in six hour age of civilization style game so kabuki kid says that is steep and that's totally understandable but it is coming i believe with all of the expansions yes. and which there's been like a lot in of this expansions. box and everything yeah there's been a lot of stuff for it so here here's the thing and hey, what's going on Makush? okay i'm 100 percent won't back this I 100% want to buy it on Amazon for 50 bucks. You can get the base <laughs> game of this for $50 from Holy Grail Games right now on Amazon. Now, that was just the first place that popped up when I typed in, you know, Dominations to buy it, right? Mm -hmm. So you can maybe even find it even cheaper from like a miniature market or your local game store might have it on sale because it's been out for three years. You might even be able to find a used copy even cheaper. This game is going to the, towards the top of my list as far as a game I want to find on a deal. Because mm -hmm. I'm interested. I'm not $180 interested. I am interested, interested. too. Like, I am interested at like 50 or below. Mm -hmm. That seems 100% fine for me to play. And then if I like it, I can kind of look up to see which expansions are the best expansions and get one or two expansions to kind of flesh it out more if we like it. But I don't want to go in at $180 right now with no idea if I even like it at all. Does that make sense? I mean, obviously. I'm happy, though, that they do have a Kickstarter that has all the stuff in it because I think that I would have probably forgotten about this game. I think it's come up before and yeah, we looked did, at it we before. We did look at it before. And I think yeah. the first time I looked at it, I was like, eh. But now that I've watched more Gameplay reviews and, reviews and playthroughs on it and stuff like yeah. that, I'm like, okay, it's not mm -hmm. as complicated as it looks. It yeah. looks complicated, well, and but two, it's not. It's place a tile, gain influence, build your tech tree. And all the complication comes from your tech tree and balancing that versus your neighbor's tech tree. And I'm okay with that. I like that part of a game. Well, and two, just as a note, like you have evolved as a gamer, I would say, over the past year yes. and a half, too. So you looking from, at this a when, year and a half ago is completely different than we you were looking doing at it now. So we've been doing a Kickstarter show for, for many years in podcast form and on YouTube. Yeah. Like a year, two years ago when I was still in school, it was light to medium. That's it. Yeah. Like, and it had to be almost like an, an, an hour or less. Now I'm very much in that one to two hour range, and I want it to be medium to medium heavy. So you right? would say no before just over it being like a Looks lengthy and, and confusing. Yeah. yeah. A game like that because you're like, no, I don't have time to actually look at that. And but play I that. do like now, tech trees. I play games that are like crappy now. just because I like unlocking <laughs> all the different things in them. You're able to look at the mechanics of the game and go, oh, I really love this, this and this and these mechanics. And maybe I would really love this game. It might not be as fiddly as I think because I have like more knowledge for that. Oh, I like looking it up. It's out of stock of Miniature Market. Okay. So I feel like this is a game I could probably find somewhere, and I know that it, it went down in price because it was 60 bucks on Amazon. Now it's 50 bucks. I saw that with my little app thing that tells me about board games and everything. So they're probably trying to sell out of some of their stock. I think for 50 bucks, it would be a back. I think, especially since oh, I can order it and goodness. get it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my local game store first. Yes. If they have it, they'll Our probably have it at the same game price. Store. <laughs> Gaming Go, Game Depot. Some, one of them Absolutely. will probably have Games it. Games You. <laughs> Games You. I can probably get it for that 50-ish buck range. That seems super doable. And then deciding, okay, I like it enough to expand it or whatever. I don't see jumping in at this at 180 all right, so, oh, we'll we'll see you a little bit in a little bit, Jay Peters. Let's see here. Uh, I'm not eligible to win the gift card. I yeah, already tried. Yeah, I was going to say, Dr. Glory Hog wins the gift card, and then you guys get nominations. I call shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. Hey, hey, Lava, what's the name of that restaurant with all that hokey stuff all over the world? You're like, oh, you guys mean shenanigans? 
This is really cool, though. These little sliding pieces for that board. I really, really like that because oh, I sure feel like the awesome little cardboard pieces that you're sliding and stuff like that, having like an actual bit there and everything would be nice and substantial on that area. Yeah, I'm sad that I can't get this, but it's maybe Petters, it's like, interested enough it. to get. They're at... like, hold on, Amazon, out of stock. Yeah. Hold on. You're going to go over to, like, all the different things? 50 bucks. <laughs> we appreciate that. I can call that. the local game store, see if they got it for around that same price. Because it seems like it was 60 before. So, I mean, even if I can get it at 60 and go pick it up today. Mm -hmm. This seems like a game, I'm interested enough in this game that if I can find it for around that 50 $60 price, I'd pick it up and even try playing it. Because it doesn't seem like, it seems like it might be a two-hour play, but it doesn't think it's actually that difficult to learn. And I like unlocking things and going down different branching paths than, like, maybe she would go down. And so, then seeing how that works. If we didn't, find it at our friendly local game store. It does look like we can pick it up here a la carte as you go along, which is getting in just enough to go ahead and, oh, okay. See, and be a part of it right here. They're still selling it for 60, but that's so, 60 euros. $2 you can get in for a la carte where you can actually pick just the game if you cannot find it somewhere. So that's always nice as well. well there's some options. Yeah. Don't everyone buy it on Amazon before I have a chance to figure it out. <laughs> Don't everybody buy it <laughs> Who doesn't like sliding mitts? Uh, no, nobody, I sliding nobody. Mitts. So, Everybody in chat, are you backing this game? Doctor, are you backing this game? No, but I, I do want to see if I can find it in... I 100% want the base game. Sorry, Fatal just messed me up. I, <laughs> I want to see if I can find the base game for a good price and try it. And okay. even then, I don't think I'd ever want it at $180. I need to see if it's a game I love enough to well, warrant some that price. What you're saying is, I don't know if I want another game that has so many other expansions, is what you're saying, right? Right, because we have, we've had some games, like we had like Ascension with a couple expansions, we've had like, we have Dominion with a couple expansions, and we just don't play those a lot. Now those are very different games a lot now, but now I try to, I try to find a game that's got, that's really good on its own, and maybe add like an expansion, yeah. but I know realistically, I'm not going to play with every single 15 expansion different expansions, coming. I don't need yeah. every version. Unless it's, it's railroading. <laughs> Unless railroading. That's so. what you wanted, yes. <laughs> Which I have played many, many expansions already. So <laughs> Nostros is about halfway through. He thinks his game group would be like, "I'm out." Aww. Yeah, I feel like this is. I feel like this is something that we'll probably play two player. But I like tech yeah. trees. I do like that, and I'm willing to give it a shot at like that fifty dollar price. And I know that if Fatal Papercut can find it for three times as much on eBay, he'll probably get it. Boom! All right, moving on. <laughs> we have Kiwi Chowdown. Kiwi Chowdown is by. Despec despicable games? Dis despective. Hold on. What is this? Detestable. Detestable. There you go. Detestable games. Apologies. Which they did uh, Dodo's Riding Dragons, right? They did that campaign also. And they I remember did the Chicken the War. The Chicken War Island one. The yeah. Chicken Island War. War at Chicken Island. They also did the Dinos Riding, or Dodo's Riding Dinos. Was the I, know one, we, I know we talked we looked about the one. chicken war one. We talked about, we talked about that one for well, sure. At least we looked at the dodos riding dragons. Oh, Dice Hospital is on Amazon right now for $40, everyone. All right, those there expansions always make me feel like without them, the game isn't complete. That's completely understandable. I also used to have that feeling a lot with those. I did too, and now mm -hmm. I look at it and I go, okay, how many times did I actually play this game last yeah. year? And if it's less than five times... Okay, I go, do I, probably, I need an expansion or not? Yeah, yeah. Can I get one expansion? Sure. I used to, whenever we played like Smash Up all the time, that's the game I bought the most yeah. expansions for. I bought like every expansion that came out. And then at a certain point in time, I stopped playing it and I had five unplayed expansions <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to stop. Kiwi Mad Max says Kabuki. <laughs> so this is an area control style game where you're going to yeah. be putting Kiwis out on the board here and taking over territories, dropping down your little... I guess like eggs or like little landings, like your little pieces here and everything and battling it out and stuff. And you have all these cute, adorable little kiwis. It does remind me a lot of the War on Chicken Island, except I'm assuming that this one has, War on Chicken Island, I think was somewhat 3D where they had different terrain. If yeah, I remember this one correctly. Doesn't. This one is this one kiwis doesn't. eating kiwis to yeah. become stronger kiwis so they can eat more kiwis. It's, if That's you watch disgusting. the video, they, keep, they go <laughs> off on it. So what's interesting about this one is you do things like you eat kiwis to get stronger, so then you stack up like t multiple tile like tokens. Yeah. And then you can like go into like an opponent's space and like potentially like make them spread out, like make them scatter. And you can manipulate by making some your opponent like explode by ha feeding them too much fruit whenever they're already like oh, at their no. at their max size. And you can manipulate a lot of stuff. It seems like there's a lot of play in between the different players. It's not just like, oh, I went here first, you can't get here type of thing. 
So it would be kind of akin to any kind of like area control game, it seems like, with First, a lot of manipulation of what you can do. You've got a hero kiwi that can do special things. Well, and I like that the cards are very easy to read and everything on them. They just have the symbols, you know what you can do with them and everything. And whoever does the miniatures for this company, like they do an amazing job on these miniatures. They look yeah. cute, comical, but also like intimidating somehow. You know what I'm saying? Like this kiwi is adorable. But if I saw this Kiwi in real life, I'd be like, mm, you seem a little sus, sir. You're going to have to stay over there, okay? <laughs> you're like, I'm going to leave this Kiwi alone. Yeah, I'll leave that Kiwi alone, but you're adorable, Kiwi, okay? You're adorable. <laughs> That's fair. There's animals that do that sometimes. I've had two animals in my life made me just straight stop what I was doing and back away. One was a camel spider. <laughs> I was walking along the road, and there's a camel spider on the road in Iraq, and it looked at me, and I looked at it, and it raised one hand up, and I was like, you're pretty big. And so I'm like, I'm going to go to the left. And so then it went, went sideways to the left, and it lifted up its other arm, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go to the right of you. And I'm trying to stay on this little road, and I go to the right, and then it went to the right, and it lifted up its arm again. And I was like, all right, so I'm like, I'm going to walk towards you. And then lifted up both front arms, and I was like, Okay, okay, I'm gonna walk around. So I you took win. a big you win. path you around. Win. I'm I took out. a big path around. Because I didn't like that it wasn't intimidated by me. And then there was this fat cat in Kentucky. You're like, this is your area, sir. Our, our little Jack Russell went running out the door and he was like bah, 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 at this cat, like underneath it, like at this cat, and this cat just sat there, just looking at this big fat orange cat, just looking at our dog. And I was like, Oh, he's gonna smack you. So I grabbed the dog and I pulled the dog away. The cat just looked at me and was like, <laughs> and I was like, Oh no, oh, sir! And so then I kind of like oh, I sir. took my foot and I was like this, right? So here's the cat, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, hey, get out of here, get out of here! Like I thought, like you know, by putting my foot near it, it would go, and I'm not worried about attacking my foot. Nope, it just stood there. It just stood there looking at me, like <laughs> try it, ground. try it. And I was like, all right, and I was like, go, go, and I was like making noises at it, trying to get it to go, and it was just like, I was like. I'm just going to go back inside. <laughs> Actually, you know, I don't even need so to I be left. out here right now. I and I'm taking inside. my dog with me, okay? <laughs> I went back inside. I was like, nope. Yeah, I took my small dog and I was like, because this cat was bigger than our dog was at the time. Oh, my gosh. So Both those animals just made me feel a fool. I had to walk away. This game is stinking adorable. I looked up the chicken, War on Chicken Island one. Single hump. As well, because I would know I was really interested in that game as well, and I want to see how well it did and everything. And it looks like it did well. It was a lighter complexity game, and I feel like this will probably be along the same lines, except like that one step up. I think it'll yeah. have probably a little bit more complexity on it because I feel like the two games are similar, but the this one, you know, you game companies are not like movies like the better it gets better as you go you know because like that is an interesting thought process <laughs> game companies are not like movies okay movies you know the second one's not going to be as good and that third one i don't know if you'll even want to see it but game companies if they revise something usually it's like it gets a little bit better super like super great they revise it again you're like oh my god bestest game ever so i feel like that just it goes like they learn more as they go along you know <laughs> but Kush has this dream about snakes where you try to like, you see one in front of you, so you try to walk around, but then there's more snakes, and then there's more snakes, and then they're <laughs> surrounded by snakes. Indiana yeah. Jones. I hate snakes. <laughs> I haven't ran across a snake that I've been afraid of yet. You would think I would in Arizona. I will say that I could give you another snake story that we were riding our bikes, and then we were mountain biking, and we were out in the desert, and she was like yelling something at me, and I'm like, what? I'm like... And she was yelling something, I'm like, what? So I stopped my bike, and she's like, there's a baby snake right there. And I'm like, what? And so then I like, I got, I jumped up on my bike real quick and I started like, you know, kind of pushing it away out of the sand. And I was like, if you wouldn't have said anything, I would have rode right by it. But since she was yelling at me, I stopped right next to the snake, right next to it. But that it was, was a, not it my was a baby fault. rattler. It <laughs> was a baby rattlesnake and it wasn't interested in me at all. It was probably still just warming up for the day. So it didn't even make a move at for me. Could have been dead, probably. All right, chat, what do you think about this game? Doctor, chat, what's your best snake story? What do you think about this game? I think it looks cute, but area control is not my thing. Oh, so I'm not control. looking to add area control <laughs> to the mix. These games always make me so angry at you because I'll have like this brilliant plan and I'll be like doing my thing and then you'll be like, <laughs> if I sacrifice this one, this one Kiwi, I can overtake the world. And I'm like, and it always comes out of nowhere. And I'm like, how did you even do that? I always miss something crucial in this. There's a reason why I'm not a general. <laughs> so why I'm a doctor. Because I always think I know what's going on, and then I lose, and I'll get I get I have that long-term plan, and then it is. There's a 
a pivoting There's moment. There's always that turning where, point where, like, where it becomes like, a flood. Game yeah, you of do stuff, something yeah. and I lose like three positions all at once, and I'm like, and oh like, no! What just happened? Oh my gosh, we what played we happened? played war chest, and that happened every single time. I'm like, oh, I'm up a territory. I need to get two more, and then she'll be like, Phew, and I'm like. Now I'm down three territories. I'm down three territories, and she needs one more. I don't know what happened, and then I'm like, I'm like, one oh, round. It's one okay. Round. I can fight her. I'm gonna fight her. I'm gonna attack her little chip thing, and I'm like, nope. And now she's attacking me back, and now I'm dying. And I, oh, I lost that one, and I lost that one. Okay, okay, it's your go. Just take your turn. Just take your turn. I get so mad. I'm like, one more time, and we played it again. Same thing happened. I was like, one more time. Then she did it again. I was like, one more time. She's like, I'm not gonna play anymore because you're gonna keep me up all night to play this game. I'm like, one more time. Four straight losses in a row. Not looking forward to playing that on stream. <laughs> You'll get really lucky on stream is what Maybe. it is. Maybe. <laughs> I, I get beat up in area control games. I just know that those are not for but me. But this is a really cute one, so maybe it'll work out for you. This one starts at $59 or like fifty nine sixty dollars reasonable. $60, reasonable. Because you get minis. Yeah. You get the hero minis. You get some like little other minis too. I'm super I'm super down with this. I if you can mix like an area control sort of war gameish strategic game in with this like really funny cuteness, I feel like that lessens the blow whenever the kiwis are coming after you. Like, can you get mad at the kiwis coming after you? I don't know. Ooh, so Jim's got a really good snake story. He's out there fishing. He goes to cast. He hits like a he hits a tree limb and he hears like a thump and his dad just pushes him in the water because a water moccasin oh. fell into the boat with him. Oh, what? Yeah, that's Why'd a good one. Into, oh, because the, because the it was tree on was the branch, the... it sounds like. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I have some other dumb snake stories, but we don't need... <laughs> I had a cousin that would chase them. I had other buddies that tried to, like, chase down snakes. They were all dumb. Look at all these cars. I'm smart enough to go, like, why are you chasing that snake? Like, if you're in the back of a pickup truck, there is never a reason you need to jump out and then go tangle with the rattlesnake. You're in the back of a pickup truck. It's not coming after you. Just drive away. All right, we're talking about kiwis. Look at these cards. Look at these adorable kiwi cards. There should be a snake cards. card in this kiwi game. Oh, we're just gosh. eat your kiwis. No. That's what happens <laughs> no. in real birds. All right, so I would back this game. Doctor, chat. No, I don't think I would. Just because it does look cute. I just don't think I like the idea of area control enough to want to play this. And I think that my kiwi will just get angry and then try to eat your kiwis. But Here's when I thing. say your kiwis, not your fruit, like your actual birds. <laughs> I they'll think, become cannibalistic. I think that this is a perfect game for me and the kid because I feel like it has enough cuteness factor to it and everything and like really streamlined ease of play with all the symbols and on there that the kid would really, really, really love to play with me. We've talked about this. We don't own a child. <laughs> We've never had a kid. Okay. This has all been in your head. The little minion. This has all been in your head. The little minion. <laughs> all right, so what do we have here? Petter says pass. Are you good? Oh, yeah, you said That's you weren't going to do <sighs> anything. You weren't going to back anything this time around, right? We haven't no, I think Petter. it's cute. And I was really sad that I missed out on the chicken war one. Yeah, so. I know you were interested in that one, too. I know. Light, Lighter or midway area control games just can, aren't exciting for me because can, it's not a... A category of game that I enjoy, so it doesn't matter like what complexity level it is. I'm just going to be pissed off the whole time. If you can add silliness to that area control bit, like it's just it's more fun. It's War more chest fun. is literally just little like wood chips going around but or that's whatever not they are. Cute. Right, but I mean those make me mad, and those are just stylized poker <laughs> chips that you're pushing around, and I'm mad about that. So you think I'm going to be less mad about my hero kiwi getting destroyed? I'm going to be so angry. Okay, so. Nosferatu Nosfer says, out of all area control games, even though it's cute, I'm not seeing anything of a wow factor for me. Not even a Greg. Sure. Interesting. Okay. I don't see anything that makes it stand out like completely unique. What, er what area control game, though, would? Like, what is that thing in an area control game that you're like, oh, well, like, this is amazing. I'll play War Chess because of the components. I think the components and the way they handle the different, like, soldiers So cute is little very mini unique. Kiwi minis, but are not as cool as, like, yeah. Poker chip components? That yeah, I have other is ridiculous. Cool names. I like the artwork ridiculous. for sure. Not a big on the area control either, says Molly. You're ridiculous. Well, then I'm playing this with myself, okay? <laughs> Solo area control. I place a thing. I control it. I win. It has it's one. It's one to four players. I can do it. <laughs> See, I like Nosferatu. What he's saying right now. Why don't you just sell us the mini? Stop forcing your game on me. What are oh. you? You two? What would you? I won't listen to your album. You two? Oh. Even if you give it to me for free. The minis are adorable. <laughs> yeah, Dwellings of Eldervale does have that visual appeal, too. I Yeah, I keep upgrading that game. I need to stop. All right. 
Lastly, we have Agents of Smirsh, the Epic Edition. Now, this is for one to four players, should last about 90 minutes here. You are a secret agent, and you're running around trying to look for, what was it, Dr. Loki or something like Lobo. that? Oh, Dr. Lobo, that's right. And this is a very, very heavy narrative-based game, What from what it sounds like. Sorry, no, go ahead, Doctor. Go ahead. I have anything to say. No, go ahead. <sighs> from what it sounds like, <laughs> this is a heavy narrative-based game. So it almost reminds me I of... like Black Widow for a minute there. Well, it almost reminds me of like an RPG that you would play because you are rolling dice for different stats and everything that you do. You are consulting this book whenever something happens and you're kind of seeing the results of what happens based on the story from the book and everything. Like, and you're all secret agents all trying to figure this out. It's like, I don't know, like if you put an RPG on top of like well, it's Fury an, of Dracula or something, maybe? It's like maybe? an epic storytelling know. game. This is kind of like what Awakened Realms does a lot of times. Or like some oh, like that's journeys a good, through that's Middle a good comparison Earth should be like too. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the deal. This oh, no. game <laughs> looks <laughs> really good. Here's the thing. Can I pretend that you're Archer? Well, that might make me interested. Here's the thing. I know we talk about theme and how theme matters. I bet you this is probably going to be the best game that I don't want to play. Because it looks really good. It looks like it has this really cool storyline. You get to fight henchmen. If you don't defeat them, they show up at the end with the boss. There's yes. alternate bosses. There's alternate kind of ending things. But here's the deal. I don't really care about spies that much. And I know that makes me weird. I bought Journeys in Middle Earth solely based off the IP. Because I was like, oh, Lord of the Rings? I'm in. I don't even know how it plays. I know it has an app. I know nothing about the gameplay, but I dropped my money on that game because I was like, oh, a storytelling game in the world of Lord of the Rings? I'm in. This one looks really good, but I don't really care about spies. I want to fight. I'd rather play in space, if that gives you an idea. I'd oh. rather play in space. Okay. So, Kabuki sorry, I got, says... I got, sorry, I know, you just... sidetracked by Studio Lansing. Yeah. Um, so, here's the deal. I'd rather play in space. I want to fight against a planet's best evolved creature, right? Like, I want to see what this other planet, say Mars, came up with for the last 5,000 years. Like, what weird things evolved and came up. I want to fight against that. I want to fight against a creature that somehow became space-worthy, flew to our planet to pick a fight. I want to fight against that creature more than I just want to fight another person. Because fighting another person's easy. I would be the worst spy. I'd be like, that guy seems like a spy. And then I'd have him executed. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't take my. Spy, I don't have though. a trial. Hey, better safe than dead. Trial by six <laughs> is better than a pallbearers of twelve, something like that. I forget. You remember I was in the infantry, so it's like if it's questionable, it's like shoot first, ask questions later. I, I don't like spies enough. It's I like too, Archer. That's funny. It's but too close to real life for it, Doctor. He it just is. A, he was a spy in real life, so. I was not a spy in real life. It was my job to catch the spies, but that's the whole thing. I just think that. It looks really good, and I would play it, I guess, but I don't feel the need to own it because I don't think this is one that I would delve into and explore and be excited about the next thing. I'm excited about the Awakened Realms game that we're getting. I don't remember what it's called, and that's a storytelling game. So I'm excited about Journeys Through Middle Earth. I'm excited through... Uh, we have Secrets of the Lost Station, which is also made by Everything Epic. I'm excited about that one. I think spy, spy thrillers or spies in general is just so low on my list of themes that I want to play that that's what's really holding me back from wanting to spend the 100 bucks. Okay, so Kabuki Kid says, this is a huge paragraph book, like Tales of Arabian Nights, but a lot more game to it. And it's set in the wacky Cold War 1970s spy era. So if you did like that very heavy storytelling portion like Arabian Nights, then this is probably going to be right up your alley. The I like spy themes. Which is surprising. I, I like spy themes. Because you hate, like... You don't really care about what mortals are doing, for the most part. <laughs> You're usually like, you don't care about the little twists and turns. You don't care about the little twists and turns that are like what people are doing or why they're doing it and emotions and like trying to figure that out. That's because I usually can predict like what people are going to do for the most part. Bam! See, you didn't predict that. <laughs> no, I knew. I knew. Here's the deal. I... In real life, I'm usually pretty good okay. about figuring people out, right? Like you in are. social deduction games, I'm you usually are. really good at figuring out what people are doing and what they're doing and manipulating yeah. people. So I don't like playing it in a game where I feel like I can't do that. Here's my problem with games like Detective or with Chronicles of Crime. Although I like both those games, 
when you're interrogating the subject, you can't read their face. You don't get to actually see an audio clip. You don't get to see a video clip of what they're doing. You don't get to hear if their voice pitch changes, if they're looking up to the left. You don't get to see those little things that they do that helps you go, ooh, this feels off. I need to dig more. You can't do that in those That's because you pick up on body days. language more, where yes. I really like the logical aspect of it, where you go through right. and start looking at So what at makes things. me mad in those types of games is I'm always just making an educated guess at the end, where I feel like in real life I can make like an intuitive guess, if that makes sense. And so like intuitively I can be like, this guy's up to something, where in those games it's just all written down, so you're going, uh, I've, I always feel like I don't have enough information to make the leap, where like in person, I'll make the leap every time. See, Petter has it. So I feel like this makes sense. Glory Hound would like this. She likes Vampire the Masquerade, which is vampires as spies, basically. Exactly. That's I true. like that political intrigue and like going through and like but navigating I love Vampire that. The Masquerade like, because you can also punch, you can also pick up a car <laughs> just and throw punch it at your somebody. way out of something. That's true. <laughs> and see, I like what I liked about Vampire the Masquerade is I got to manipulate the story the way I wanted to, right? So we started off when we played our big Vampire the Masquerade game. It started off where we, no one had really an agenda, but I had an agenda as a Bruja. I wanted to overthrow the prince. I said it from the very beginning. Everyone's like, you're dumb, you're dumb, you're dumb. By the end of that, when we were a year and a half into it, we overthrew the prince. One of our player characters became the new prince. And the Bruja and the Bruja, me as a Bruja, and then the other two Bruja brothers, because two people made Brujas to hang out with my Bruja, we ended up all riding out to the Anarch States like of, of California. So like... We got to shape that world more. I don't think you could do that as much in this game well, no, it's gonna because it's going to be more. Well, because this is a story that you're right, following. Right, it's a story adventure. Yeah. Right. So, but it's not just any story adventure. Like the bad guy could show up early. Like if things go bad in the story and stuff. Like, but see, here's the thing. Whenever they do that, they go, "Oh, the bad guy shows up early." I go, "Well, just shoot him." Oh, you can't do that. Why? I have a gun. I just shoot the bad guy. Problem solved. I don't like your poo poo attitude. Violence doctor. is always I don't like an answer. Your poo -poo attitude. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think this game looks amazing. I love the story portion of it. I love being a spy going through the game and everything. I love that you are trying to hunt down Mr. Lobo, but then there's also like this overarching sort of story that you have here. Like if you like story based campaign sort of games, like you're probably gonna like this game. As long as you like spies, like that's all that's all it is because it looks amazing and plus it's very detailed in the way that you operate your character and everything. Would an awesome power thing make this more attractive or less attractive? I think twenty years ago would have made it more attractive. I don't know if I'm still down with Austin Powers. It's been so long. I don't even quote it anymore. I don't think I don't know if it stood up to the test of time. I used to quote it all the time, but I don't know if I like it as much anymore now. It, it's interesting. Like I said, I think I'm going to regret it. I just don't think the theme does it enough for me. Like, if say, if Journeys Through Middle Earth has some parts I don't like, I'm going to push through it because I still want to unlock that you story. Just wish, if this has parts in it that I don't like, I'm just going to want to stop. You just wish, so you don't think that the game is going to be not something you like. You just don't think that you like the theme of it. Enough, so if this yes. was a different themed game, like, yeah. hence, if Wingspan was about dragons... I would like You'd be like, more. oh my gosh, yeah. I love the wingspan dragons. And so if this was a different thing, medieval spies like various, you'd be like, Ooh, oh, yeah. that sounds really interesting. See, see, oh, sorry. <laughs> that was if we were sending <laughs> ravens back and forth. <laughs> my lord, I do detest. Oh, it takes us some ravens. Apparently, you can send you ravens. You were sending ravens back and forth. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think. There, there was a time in my life where I was super into the spy stuff and I read a bunch of books and everything and but then I just kind of got out of it. I'll watch a real life spy movie based off of real life and what happened. I don't know. I don't know. Throws paper airplane to the first player marker. Who throws the first player marker? There you go. <laughs> Who does number two work for? That's right. You give him hell, bud. I think this looks amazing, and I think it's a really good pick. And I... Well, we have another one, though. We have Secrets of the Lost Station, which is also made by Everything Epic. Yeah. So I feel like... If I played You're that like one, one and I really liked it, it okay. then I can maybe see getting into this one. I just okay. think this theme is less appealing to me than other themes. So the base price on this is a hundred have a hundred to hundred and sixty. So a hundred I think is like the base pledge and then like hundred and sixty is like your crazy epic doubt. Deluxe deluxe some wood pieces. Crazy edition here. So a if you're interested comes to your in house it, and tries to assassinate you, but then fails miserably. The hundred dollars is your starting mark, and for anybody that's like, oh man, a hundred dollars, you have to remember that there's lots of writers that write all that text and the and those oh, yeah. books and, and create the story and all the arches and everything. So like, it is 
a very substantial Secrets game. Secrets of the Lost Station is a box like this. Yeah, it's, it's a box huge. the same size of like. It's huge. It's the same size as like Gloomhaven, not as long, but the same like. It's the like same height. height of Gloomhaven, but it's probably it's a big like square half. box. Yeah, it's like yeah, it takes square. up it takes up most of the calyx. Like most of a cube. Oh right? yeah, you can't fit much on there. Besides I think you that can box. maybe fit like one other game on there with yeah. the calyx to give mm -hmm. you kind of idea of how big it is, right? Mm -hmm. So, and here's the thing: I think I would like it, but I know they have Secrets of the Lost Tombs. Yeah, they have Secrets of the Lost Station. Mm -hmm. So one of them space, one of them's like archaeology style, and then there's spy. I just think this would be the bottom of my list out of the three. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Even though this one has a good pedigree and stuff, and like I said, I admit it might be a really good game. It probably is a good game. Chat. I just don't think I want to play Spies. Everybody besides Kabuki, because I know Kabuki's backing it. Are you backing this game? Doctor, are you backing this game? No, and it's, it's so silly. It's just because of the theme. It is kind of silly. It is kind of silly, because it's, it's just the theme. Because I mentioned right. another theme, and you're like, oh, yeah. hold on. Because you're adding, on. you're adding an IP that I'm interested in. <laughs> I think this would be amazing. I just don't know if Doctor would play it with me. <laughs> Kabuki got a call during the middle of no! it. No! Well, don't watch it, Kabuki. I'm just gonna you're make gonna, you sad. You're just—he's just gonna poo-poo on it, and then realize he would play it if it was just a different theme. So Whew, I got—I got Studio Landis to back me up. Same. It's just too mundane of a theme. On the fence because of the budget. Totally understand. There's been a lot of big games lately, but That's true. speaking of budgets, oh, I can okay. help everyone out here via the Glory Mom. So the Glory Mom. I would get this too if I already knew I liked the old one because it does seem like it's enough of an upgrade. The Glory Mom has given us a $25 gift certificate to give out to one of our lovely, lovely viewers out there. So what are we going to do for this? What do we want right. to have them list in the comments? So for this okay. giveaway, for this, this week. We're going to do four of them. We're going to base week. it off of comments left on the video. So not the live comments. We'll right. do live comments so next time. After we end the video, you have to come right back and just yeah. leave a comment. What do you want the comment to be about? The the comment is going to need to be based off of, if you could hang out with us this weekend, what was what is the one game you'd bring to play with us? That's a good So if you were coming to, to the studio, or you were hanging out with us this weekend, what's the one game you'd bring to show us? It could be something that's silly because you just think it'd be fun to play with us. It could be something that's like your favorite game. Just what's the one game you'd bring? You only got room for one, one game in your carry-on to fly out here or whatever. One game. One game. One game. What game would I play with all of you? See, it depends on the person. Like, I know what I'd play with certain people, I think. Okay. Like, apparently I play Agents of Smirch with Kabuki. <laughs> That's a really tough one. Nosferatu? Like, you just Vampire pick your the favorite Masquerade. game? I would play one of the Vampire the Masquerade games, Do I think. You pick your favorite game to show, like, the people that you want to hang out with, right? Jim Gardner and probably, right? like, Petter and Fatal. Probably Coloma or Super Fantasy Brawl. <laughs> Super Fantasy Brawl. I mean, it Twister. just really depends on the person. <laughs> Wow, Kabuki. Wow, Kabuki. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Heart's beating faster. <laughs> Jello All right, wrestling. so, Doctor, ending out the show. Jim, I would play Coloma with you. I'd really like to play that one. I think that would be a good one. What are you spending your burrito money on this week? I think I'm going to look in to see if I can find a copy of Dominations and back that. Mm -hmm. And just get it, like, now-ish. All right, so this is really tough for me because I really, really like Vivid and Kiwi Chowdown. A lot. I feel like, I, though, I would have a better chance of you playing Vivid Memories with me. Between which? Yeah. Yeah, that oh, for or sure. Kiwi Chowdown. So I'm going to say Vivid Memories because I really, really like those abstract style okay. games. I love the games that Floodgate has coming out and stuff. Like They've had good ones. Mwah. Mwah. Anything oh, man. else? If somebody would teach Anything me how to play Massive Darkness so I can figure <laughs> out if I want to keep it or reclaim those two Calyx cubes. That'd be amazing. If you are new to our channel, make sure to hang out with us, join the pack, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Yes. Get notified whenever we go live. And make sure to come back next week and yeah, check next out more week, like said, Next week we'll yeah. do it with we're gonna do live, live comments. comments next week. Yeah. We're going to do it and mix it up because we know everybody can watch it live. So what we'll yeah. do is next week we'll announce who won it based off the comments. So you got to come back to the video once it's finished yep. uploading. And tell us the one game you would play with us if you could play one Absolutely. game this weekend. So that means tomorrow. And Discord Disco Party. That's right, Petter. Make sure to check out our Discord Disco Party in the links below. We have links for everything, all the games that you saw here, as well as all the social medias where you can follow us. And I think that's about it. Yeah. And uh, say thanks to the Glory Mom. I love I love the Glory Mom. This She's one, wonderful. This, this one was sponsored by our Patreon members and Glory Mom. That's right. Patreon and members viewers and Glory like Mom. <laughs> all right, everyone. We will see all of you later. Thanks so much for joining us today. We love having you here. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. It's fine.